All right, guys, today I will be reviewing Nightmares in Niagara Falls, Canada. This is known as being the scariest attraction in all of Niagara Falls, and I will say it does live up to those standards. It doesn't quite live up to what I thought it was going to be, and I'll get into that in this review. So to start off, it's in a great location, um, very doable walk away from a lot of big attractions, like everything on Clifton Hill, Falls View, all that good stuff. Um, if you're coming from Falls View, just like walk up past the Perkins and you'll see it. Um, coming from Clifton Hill, just cross the street um, and then go right and then you'll see it. So yeah, very doable location if you're going to Falls View or Clifton Hill especially. Um, casino, anything like that. For me, it wasn't very busy, but that being said, I went on a Friday in December, so I don't think a lot of people were really looking for a haunt experience in December. Um, I was probably one of the only people who actually wanted to do a haunt in December. So I imagine it's busier during the summer and fall months when haunts are actually popular. But nevertheless, it wasn't that crowded for me, so I only had to wait one group. Um, they sent you in this little queue area that's not very big. It's right in the lobby. Um, this lobby area, um, you get your tickets. Um, you can get a ton of merch. They have a ton there. Um, you can get your pictures when you get out, obviously. And then they have the infamous chicken counter. Um, over 160,000 people have chickened out on this thing, apparently. Um, I can't see how, given the experience I got, but... I don't know, maybe people in Niagara Falls are just weaker than me. I don't know. So I do have to put up a spoiler warning, um, especially right now, because I will go into detail about some of the stuff in this place. Um, so if you don't want to hear about that, then definitely leave the video. Um, but to start off, you're going to enter the room. Um, you have to walk up a flight of stairs to get there. Um, so you start on the top of the building and you enter through a lit up room and then I couldn't tell what it was, but there was something like showing light so you could see and then it just closes. So it's pitch black in there and the only things to guide you through are these little red lights that are like tiny, um, spaced out pretty well so you can barely see. I hear that. Um, they used to not have those, which it would have been nicer if they weren't there because it would have been a lot um, scarier, I think, if you couldn't see anything. Um, in this house, the actors can touch you. Um, so I thought this was going to be really intense. Like there are going to be like a couple actors at a time just grabbing you, like pulling your arm, like trying to make you trip or something. Um, there were only a couple of those instances, and they were just like, uh, grab your ankles and, yeah, don't really do much. Um, they are good at, like, trying to, like, make noises and, like, be creepy, I guess. But, I don't know, the actual, like, jump scares they do aren't the most impressive in the world. My favorite scare of any haunt is definitely still a Grizzlies with one of the Chainsaw guys. But, I mean, the actors here are definitely good. There's definitely not many of them, but, again, I went during December, so I bet there's more during the fall season. So I will admit me being kind of underwhelmed by this place is kind of my fault for going, like, during the Christmas season, but still, like, I, I'd hope you'd have a bit more actors than they had in there, but... That's fine. What about the sets? The sets are actually pretty good, I'd say. Um, in my opinion, the best scare of the entire house was um, this part where it's just pitch black and out of nowhere, you see this huge truck um, blasting its horn in your ear and just charging towards you on a slider just out of nowhere. That definitely got me. Um, that was definitely the best moment in the house, in my opinion. There's a couple of these scenes where, like, they trap you in a room. One in particular was just they trap you in and make a couple noises and move a couple things. So nothing too special. The other was another one of those areas where, like, 
they trap you in this airbag and you have to stay there for like a minute. Um, I, I was kind of like, eh, um, I wish someone would have like chased us out of there or something at the end. Um, cause that would have been cool. Like if you were thinking, oh yeah, it's done. And then they get you, that would have been really cool. It might not be the wet, wisest decision to come here if you're a bigger person because they've got a lot of things that aren't very friendly to bigger people, um, such as crawling under a tiny thing, like a tiny tunnel that like even me and um, my friend Chase had to like crawl on our knees to get through. So that definitely wouldn't have been good if someone bigger was in there. Um, there was like one of those vortex tunnels. Um, that was kind of cool. There was like a bunch of random steps and bridges all over the place that, I mean, for me, it was great that added, but for someone bigger, that might be a disaster. (laughs) There's a point where, um, it's kind of like the two thirds of the way through point where you have to walk down a set of stairs. Um, so that was kind of nice. Um, because Chase was leading us at the start, and then I leaded us for the um, second part. So that's kind of good if, like, you kind of want to change positions, like have whoever was in the front go to the back in your group. Like, that's definitely a good time to do that. Um, I wish they would have had, like, a little something like House of Frankenstein has at the end. I'm not going to spoil what that is in this review, because you're not here to hear about House of Frankenstein, but... Um, I wish they had a little scare, like, at the bottom of the stairs. That would have been nice. But, oh well. So, for the finale, you can see everyone running out at the very end of the haunt um, while you're waiting to get in. Um, So, I thought it was going to be something big. I thought it would have been, like, chainsaws with strobe lights and, like, ra- loud crashes and all that good stuff. But, it was just, like, a series of random and i mean random sounds like electricity like trash cans kind of like banging up against each other like i don't know what was happening um i kind of jumped for a minute but then like i realized okay yeah this is not really that good um so for the finale i was a bit disappointed um so yeah overall like I definitely really liked it. Don't get me wrong. I'd still probably give it like an 8 out of 10 for haunts. I mean, the few times where they would grab you, um, that was all right. Um, The scare actors were definitely good at like being creepy. There were a lot of effects and animatronics I did like. Um, It was just that, I don't know, it didn't live up to what I thought it could be. Some of the effects weren't quite as good as they could have been. There were a lot of missed opportunities for scares, and some of those might be fixed during the summer and fall months when there's more actors. But overall, again, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Definitely worth doing if you're in Niagara Falls. I wouldn't drive more than two hours for this place if I were you, but that's just my review on Nightmares Fear Factory in Niagara Falls, Canada. Let me know what you guys think of this place down in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.